let's talk about the GNL saddle lock bridge. This is another uh, invention by Leo Fender that he'd uh, come up with in the late 1970s and again debuted on GNL instruments in 1980. How this came about, Leo Fender was really attacking a couple of fronts. There was the there's the pickup technology, but then the other component that was sort of uh, a key part of his mission was how can we capture more of the string energy and get it into the bodywood? How can we create more sustain? And he was looking at the bridge designs and uh, Obviously, you know, he had a lot to build on. And uh, in the case of the, let's say the hardtail bridge, the saddle lock bridge, which would on many guitars, and of course the GNL basses. Okay, so what's really neat about this bridge, right here on the little side, right here on the side, there's a little Allen screw. It's a little hex screw. And what that does is once you've set your height and your intonation, you turn this in, you just kind of and it kind of squishes, locks all these saddles together against the bridge plate. So what that does is the side, does, the, the string energy reaches the saddle and rather than some of that energy getting lost in side to side movement, it's really captured and then and, and sort of goes right into the bridge plate. So now the, the saddles and the bridge plate are sort of like one piece acting as one solid mass. Okay, so looking at the cross-section picture, uh, where you can kind of see through the body there, uh, you see the protrusion that's coming out the bottom side of this bridge. Now that protrusion fits into a route into the body. And the reason for that is we capture the string energy into this bridge plate with this locking mechanism, the saddle lock, and then what Leo wanted to do is not just rely on screws or even strings going through the body. He was intent on getting this vibration into the end grain of the wood. So the end grain, the end grain of the wood, the body's going this way, right? We don't have guitars with the grain going in and out. It's traveling, it's going this way. Now the vibration, the vibration prefers to travel along the end grain easier than sort of through it. It kind of makes sense when you think about it. So Leo was thinking, well, even since his earliest bridge, uh, a, a string would go through the body and therefore it would compress the body would, in a, sen a certain sense. And that's how you would get the maximum amount of string energy into the body. But Leo thought, hey, if I can find an efficient way to transfer that string energy, not just through compression of the body, but to press directly against the end grain of the body, which is the way that the vibration prefers to travel anyway, this could be a wonderful solution. So in the late 1960s uh, at CLF Research, he came up with a bridge with a cantilevered system, all these, this system designed to get fingers to press against the end grain of the wood. And while that was, it's pioneering, Leo was the kind of guy that would he'd start to engineer it and figure out later if there's an efficient solution to it. But first he was trying to prove a point. But about 10 years later in the late 70s, he found the elegant solution. Capture the string energy into the bridge plate so it acts as one mass, and then the lower part of the saddle lock bridge has the foot. Now have that press into the body and go against the end grain of the body. Now that is an elegant solution, and this bridge is also enormously comfortable. Well, that's one of the, lot, one of the things that a lot of people love about this bass, especially guitar players who are down here. This is just so comfortable. It's a great looking bridge. It looks like it's, it's, it looks like it's built to be, you know, like a military tank or something, because Leo Fender was really into that level of craftsmanship and precision and robustness. So all the GNL instruments had that sort of robustness that permeated everything. It felt like everything was built to last forever. They still are.